One of the topics I end up speaking most about probably is cold calling and how do you make good cold calls. And I think the first thing about cold calling we have to understand is that the objective of cold calling is not what a lot of people think. The objective is not to impress people, it's not to get them excited, get their attention. Um, the objective of a cold call in prospecting is really about moving from an interruption, right, where you're interrupting somebody's day, they're answering the phone, they're not expecting your call, to a, a plan for conversation, right? In a lot of cases, what I'll even say is, you know, to, to our first scheduled interaction, right? I'll do my little calendar thing here. A uh, scheduled call. And as such, it's really important to understand that most traditional cold calling techniques really do a poor job of making this conversion because they're trying to, you know, wow somebody, the elevator pitch, etc., etc. So I've done lots of writing on, on cold call scripting and objection handling, etc., but I thought it'd be useful to go through a high-level workflow map, really a step-by-step -step workflow map of how the cold call works in a visual format. And if you want more details about uh, exactly how this would work and the scripting and all that fun stuff, pretty sure there's a link down here someplace, hint, hint, hint. Anyway, so I'll tell you that the goal of cold call flow, the goal of the scripting, the process I use, is to make the entire process uh, at least as predictable as possible, right? It's hard, it's difficult. You gotta be, you know, uh, very attentive and paying attention and, and able to think on your feet. So the fewer variables we can have, the more, the more variables we can take out of the equation, the better. So we'll just start from the beginning, right? And the idea is we're gonna make a bunch of calls and I've talked about calling paradigm, etc. Uh, a lot of people really don't like my phone uh, icon, but, um, you know, well, sorry, I'm old school. So anyway, everything starts with the phone or, or from, uh, from making the phone call. At some point in time, the prospect is going to answer. And uh, what we're hoping for, right, is, is where they say, hey, hello, or how are you, or hello, my name is, you know, hello, you've reached, what have you. So what happens next? Well, first step is we're going to start with a basic introduction, right? My name is... You know, hello, so-and-so, my name is dot, dot, dot. And one of my, uh, I don't want to say pet peeves, but one of the things I'm really insistent on is always asking for the prospect's time. Have I caught you at a bad time? Now, I'll tell you one thing. We studied this, this question. We studied this intro over literally millions of, of phone calls and found out that I have a caught you at a bad time works far better than have I caught you at a good time. Don't ask me why. I'm a statistician, not a psychologist. But fundamentally, this is the open. Have I caught you at a bad time? One of the nice things about you know, this process, or have I caught you at a bad time, is it's going to yield a couple of predictable responses, right? Number one, yes, you have. Usually followed by a click, right? Not always. We'll talk about that in a second. Number two, no, you have not. It's a great time, very rare. However, uh, you know, not, not, not as exciting as we'd like. More often than not, what you hear is this yes, but, right? Yes, you have, but what is this about, right? So either way, you're getting, you know, essentially what you want, at least in two out of the three of these, where you know, you're, you're now able to enter in the conversation. You've asked them the question, it's their turn to respond. Um, now you're gonna say, you're gonna do your intro, and I've gone, gone, uh, gone through this in a lot of detail in my, uh, in my scripting, and again, the documents you'll find below. But essentially the intro is, you know, something like a thank you, or that's great, doesn't really matter. Uh, once again, My name is, right? And here's where it gets really important, right? Unlike traditional cold calling approaches, which say, pitch and wow, and give me elevator pitch, uh, you know, tell them all the things that, that are great about your company, etc. We're gonna do something very, very simple, and that is state the purpose of the call. 
right? Why are you calling in a cold call? What are you trying to accomplish? Well, the answer we already said is we're trying to move from an interruption to a plan for a scheduled interaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to say something like the purpose of my call is I'm looking to get 10 to 15 minutes next week on your calendar for a brief introductory conversation, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me say this before. You can find all the scripting here. But the important thing is don't spend a lot of detail, right? Some of the blogs I've written and some of the things I've talked about illuminate the fact that one of the challenges in this first eight to 10 seconds of the conversation is the fact that the prospect really isn't hearing you. They're task switching. I think in one of the blogs I actually talked about how we study this. But they're task switching. They're trying to move from what they're previously doing, talking to you or at least listening to you. So stating your purpose is very powerful. I'm looking to get 15, 20 minutes in your calendar early next week, 10 to 15 minutes to formally introduce myself and my company, right? What's going to happen here is very, very interesting, right? Essentially, you're causing a major disconnect in their brain, right? It's, it's called, you know, the term I like to use is a pattern interrupt, right? Because they're expecting something along the lines of what they hear from most people, which is, my company does this, and here's how great we are, and here's the value proposition, etc. But really, when I ask for your time, I have no other choice, or you have no other choice, than to say, well, wait a minute. What is this about? What do you do? Whatever the variant is. And by the way, this could be nice. I'm sorry, have we met each other? You know, do we know each other? What's going on? It could also be, you know, rather abrupt. Who the heck is this? Why are you bugging me? Why the hell would I meet with you? Etc. Etc. But fundamentally, stating your purpose right, which as I said is a meeting, right, my purpose is not to explain what I do, get you excited about it, um, you know, make sure you know what I do, it's simply I'm calling to get a meeting, so I'm going to state my purpose, I'm going to get a question out of this, whether they say it nicely or not, it's still a question, as we've talked about before, a conversation requires two people talking, so the more I can pass the ball back and forth, the better, additionally, the more I don't know, think of them as hops back and forth between the prospect and myself, the better chance they're actually engaging me. All right, so what's going to happen next? Well, my favorite is, you know, let's some, we got a question here, so let's answer the question. So when they say, well, sorry, what is this about, or who are you, why the, why the, why the heck would I be talking to you, we're going we're gonna to respond right back, and we're going to say, well, thanks for asking. You'll, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot, and some people make fun of me. Um, I actually stole this from... Uh, from old VPS sale of mine, VPS sales, which I, I thought was a great thing. Thanks for asking. I'm going to ask another question, right? Because I need the ball to go back to you so we can keep it going. Not have. Have you heard of my company, right? So I want to kind of create some context here. Chances are the answer is no, right? I'm cold calling you or you would have heard of me. So, but I get another question here and that's, that's just fine. That's perfect. So now I'm going to keep the conversation going. Have you heard of me? Right? And the answer most likely is going to be no, followed by, guess what? They're going to ask me a question again. What, who are you? Right? Or what do you do? Um, one of the most important questions you can be able to answer is what do you do? And we'll talk about that in about, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds here. But bottom line is, I'm prompting them for a, who are you, what do you do, have I heard you, and that's just fine, right? Because that's where I really want to get to on this. Now, this is, if you ask me, where the very most important part of the entire process comes in. And that is answering for the prospect who you've, obviously through this whole process, gotten to the point where they're actually listening to you, they're engaged, and they've asked you twice, what do you do? What do you do? you got to answer that question, right? Now think about it. When somebody is uh, being interrupted, when they're being cold called, if you will, what they're, rest what, they're, what, they're, what they're trying to do is search for context. They're trying to understand, do I know this person? Have we spoken before, et cetera, et cetera. And um, you know, they're trying to put you into a box. So using a lot of fluffy, um, you know, crazy language is not gonna work. Using a bunch of marketing, you know, uh, fancy words is not gonna work. And I'll tell you what is not gonna work is, is stuff like, uh, explaining, you know, all the components of what we do. So basically what I say to folks is, 
you know, functional doesn't work. And I'll, I'll put my line in here so you know where I'm going with this. And similarly, uh, let's call this let's call this conceptual terms don't really work well. What does work, and what I found to be exceptionally effective, is something that I've referred to as a referential answer, referential explanation to what we do. Long story short, this is this is my little buzzword. I've got lots of writing on what this is, but a, but a referential explanation of what we do answers the question, what do you do, who are you, by basically explaining to them, and I'll write this slowly, how we have served others like them, with the emphasis on them. Really, really important. By way of example, when somebody says, hey Townsend, what do you do? I can say, well, I, I help people implement Salesforce, or I teach people how to make cold calls, or I can help grow your revenue 100% in 24 months. Instead, what I tend to say is, I serve, I work with CEOs, founders, principals, owners of companies in the one to $10 million range who are trying to make the leap from entrepreneurial selling to professional selling. Typically, they share with me that they're frustrated with their CRM not working for them, their people not making cold calls, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm referring to others like them. Now, don't stop when you're done, right? Don't stop with the explanation because you just kind of have this weird, awkward silence and nobody likes that. The next step is really important and that is get back to your purpose. Right? I'm calling to schedule 15, 20 minutes of time in your calendar, blah, 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 so we can have an introductory conversation. I've made it this far. I've given you some context. Don't allow the conversation to devolve into a lot of how do you do that and what have you. Make sure you ask again for what it is that you are looking for. Get back to your purpose, which is the meeting. Now. Following this process, does that mean you're going to get the meeting every time and there's no further conversation? No. But think about all this, this, this context, right? We're, we're probably 45 seconds, 35 seconds into a conversation. We've asked several times for a, conver you know, for a meeting. We've stated what we do. We've stated our purpose pretty clear. At this point, you're not out of the woods because you've still interrupted them and they still don't want to talk to you and it's still is cold calling, etc. But really... All you're going to deal with at this point is objections, right? And that's part of the process. And again, some sort of link here, some sort of document that you're going to have to deal with, or, or I suggest you should download in order to uh, to get some better tools here. But just understand that you know you follow this process, you handle some objections, you're going to get a lot of meetings. Uh, you're going to have to handle objections. In fact, I tell a lot of my clients if you're not hearing objections from your prospects that are not really listening to you. Objections are a logical part of their conversation. So you need to learn how to deal with objections. But if you follow this process step by step, you're going to have a minimum amount of divergence from, from this basic script. And you're going to be able to get to the point where you handle a couple objections, keep asking for the meeting, and you'll get the meeting. So hope this is helpful. Look forward to your comments, questions. Let me know how I can help.